Last week was this topic. We're just dealing with a topic, like greed. That's it. Our story is about greed. Then this week we said, let's look at the thematic argument and say, okay, we'll have a premise. Greed leads to self-destruction. Well, how do you write from it? You really can't. But if we take it into the three parts that are there, the topic, the argument, and the conclusion, the first thing we can do is say, let's take the topic of greed and turn it into a conflict. Greed versus generosity. Now we've got some differential. And let's create the leads to part by creating 28 scenes. Leads to will now be 28 scenes, and we'll take those scenes and using the rules we have for making sure all the number ones happened before the number twos to keep the act things and mixing them up any way we wanted and basing them on plot, we can now drop in both sides of the thematic argument, greed, generosity, and that's the end of Act 1, generosity, and then greed in this one, and that's the end of Act 2, and go on until we've finally done that for all three acts and assign them a value. And at the end, we can total up those values and see how the whole thing did at the end. We'll be able to say here in the conclusion that this one came out this far better than that one or this much worse than that one. And together, they, all together, it gives us the emotional conclusion at the end that this is just how bad that through line was emotionally, how bad a trip it was or how good a trip it was. We can do that for each of four through lines, like we just saw. The only thing remaining is well, there's two things remaining. One, there's a little extra bit at the conclusion. Remember last, was it last week? I can't remember. A couple weeks ago, we talked about the end of a story could be success or a failure. It could also be good or bad in terms of the main character. Good or bad. Do they resolve their angst or not? So we said you could have a success good story, which was a triumph. You could have a failure bad story, which was a tragedy. Tragedy. Okay. Or we could have a success bad story, which was a personal tragedy, or a failure good story, which was a personal triumph. Personal triumph. Personal tragedy. Okay. So we have four endings. Now, with these four endings that occur again out of the plot dynamics that we talked about in our class on the eight essential questions. It was story forming part two, where we covered these. And we said that a triumph was like Star Wars, a happy ending. A tragedy was like Hamlet, a failure bad. Um, then we ended up with the um, personal tragedy, personal triumph, which would be like Rain Man, in which he fails, but he learns to lose the hatred of his father and love the brother he never had. And then we had a uh, personal tragedy like Silence of the Lambs or Remains of the Day where success is achieved but the main character is miserable in the end anyway. Using those four conclusions and adding to it what we just did today, we're able to say that we have overall in the story as a whole tragedy, or I mean let's start with triumph, triumph, tragedy, personal triumph, and personal tragedy Okay, and add to that, plus, add to that the outcome of each of the four through lines in being positive or negative and how far, or zero, and then take all of those and bring them together and say this is the overall positive or negative and how much on the scale of the story's emotional journey. That's how it concludes as the feelings total up for the audience, for the story, and this gives them their mood. Mood and feelings are two different things. Here you have the mood of the overall story as it concludes, and here's the emotional baggage that they, you carry to that mood for the audience, the feelings as they total up and average out. Together, they create the overall feeling for the end of your story, the mood, M-O-O-D, and the feelings or the experience experience. Okay, So let me get rid of this mess and I'll just put those words up for you to consider for a second. The mood and the experience. It's a little bit like signposts and journeys, isn't it? It's looking at this is the stuff and this is how we feel about the stuff. 
Have you ever been down because something was a bad situation but managed to feel good about it? Even though things didn't work out or the main character is miserable, even if the main character has bad as the judgment, even if it's failure so that it's a total tragedy, you can still end up having the audience walk away from the theater feeling pretty good. Because along the way, thematically in the thematic argument, they ended up with a lot of plus factors. So they had a feel-good experience, and it's not completely diluted by the fact there's a tragic ending. When they think about the story, days to come, weeks to come, years to come, if you're that lucky, it'll be the sum total of all of this that sticks with them. And the, they'll look at it and they'll suddenly start saying, hey, this story feels better than I thought it did, or boy, that ending was more of a downer than I thought it was. Because they don't remember the emotions, they just remember some of the events, they go back and don't realize that it's the emotional journey that has to be retaken each time to create in them uh, an emotional platform from which to appreciate the structural emotional conclusion.